The Autobahn, a federal highway system in Germany, most widely known for having no federally mandated speed limit. The system of roads has become iconic around the world. If you know roads, you've probably heard of the Autobahn. But a road you probably haven't heard of is I-696 in Detroit, Michigan. This highway has an insane history filled with pretty much everything that could possibly go wrong. I-696's main cause for relevancy is the notoriety for dangerous drivers, weaving through traffic. This happens so much, it has gained the title of America's Autobahn. Before the video starts though, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. We make geography content like this every single week, talking about weird quirks and other interesting topics related to American roads and geography. So click that subscribe button if that's the type of thing that interests you. Thanks so much. So Detroit has its roads laid out in an incredibly simple method, the mile road system. Every mile there's a numbered road counting down depending on how far from the downtown they are. You can start by counting up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. Eight Mile Road is probably the most famous and widely known of the mile roads. It's a divided highway that serves as the north boundary of the official city of Detroit. Now, what does this have to do with the topic of today's video? Well, if we continue counting up, we get to 10 and 11 mile roads. That's where we find I-696, America's Autobahn. So starting at the highway's east terminus with I-94, it goes along the 11 mile road which serves as a sort of frontage road to the highway. From there, it works its way west, seeing four exits before it finds the first strange interchange of the route with Mound Road. The main thing I notice here that's out of the ordinary are these sort of offshoot frontage routes to Mound Road that kind of squiggles their way through the interchange, and I'm not really sure why they're there. If we look at Street View, we also see another problem with them, since they're in absolutely abysmal condition. Continuing on from there around a mile, I-696 takes a turn to the south, and starts to instead parallel with 10 mile road instead of 11 mile road. Now if we zoom out and look at the entire highway, this will show us how weird the turn to 10 mile road is. Why wouldn't I-696 just stay with 11 mile road the entire time, instead of dipping down for a few miles, just to come right back up again? Well, we'll find out when we go over the mess of a history this highway has. So continuing on from there, I-696 stays to the south of Royal Oak, passing another really interesting interchange with Woodward Avenue which just looks like a triple-decker, complete mess of a design. Moving on from there, we go past the Detroit Zoo and Rackham Golf Course, which will both come into play later in the story. Around a mile later, the highway zigzags around a little bit, before finally meeting back up with 11 Mile Road. But we aren't out of the woods yet. Two miles to the west of there, we find an interchange so absolutely insane, it literally has a name. The Mixing Bull. Now there's simply too much going on with this interchange and I have a lot more than I want to go over in the video, so I'll just give you 5 seconds to examine it for yourself. So moving on from there, we go into the city of Farmington Hills, where I-696 finally comes to an end, at yet another crazy interchange with I-96 and Michigan State Highway 5. What a wild 28 miles of interstate. And that's before you know the full story of the highway. So let's get into the history and find out what makes it so interesting. Starting all the way back in 1956, when the original interstate system was passed into law, I-696 was in the original plan as I-98. Construction started officially in 1961, with the already opened Lodge Freeway being given the I-696 designation in 1962. By late 1963, the entire western third had been finished from its terminus to the now famous Mixing Bowl Interchange. That was the easy part, because after those 9 miles were finished, every problem imaginable arose. So let's go through them slowly. First, pay attention to the city lines around the highway in the middle portion. Over a 7 mile segment, I-696 goes through or beside Lanthrop Village, Southfield, Oak Park, Pleasant Ridge, Hauntington Woods, Royal Oak, and Ferndale. That's 7 communities, all with their own problems and requests for the highway. First of all, if the highway stayed parallel with 11 Mile Road, it would go straight through downtown Royal Oak, so they were forced to go along the south boundary, a mile south, as to not disrupt anything there. In Huntington Woods, though, there was another major problem, because the Detroit Zoo was right along the planned route, and the city had a valid argument that the highway would disrupt the animals they were keeping there. As well as that, there was a current plan for the Rackham Golf Course to be built on top of the planned route for I-696, so that would have to be redesigned if the highway was built. All this led to a lawsuit being filed, making things even more complicated. So let's move to our next problem in Oak Park, where a community of Orthodox Jews wanted the freeway to pass to the north of their city. Now if you look at a map of where Oak Park stretches, 
That would be darn near impossible, with a sharp 90 degree turn going straight through a wealthier community in Huntington Woods being basically the only way to get this done. So this would obviously not be possible. So instead, they asked for a design to mitigate impact on the pedestrian-dependent community. They even hired a rabbi to serve as a consultant on the project. How designers chose to adhere to the community was by building pedestrian plazas over the top of the freeway in portions while it went over Oak Park. Though this was very difficult to make happen because there needed to be length restrictions put on it so they weren't technically tunnels and no ventilation systems would be needed. But that solved the problem with Oak Park. Next, I-696 took a turn back to the north and went through Lanthrop Village, who seemed to just be mad in general. See, I-696 was going straight through the city, cutting it in half. It's pretty easy to see why they would be angry about this, and they wanted to go out of their way to make the process as difficult as possible because of it. I-696 couldn't be built straight through the city without their approval, and when in 1971, Lanthrop Village withdrew from the planning agreement, it delayed the highway by several years meaning it wouldn't actually be fully built and completed until 1981. To put that into perspective, this 28-mile freeway was in the original interstate system plan, yet the 1,585-mile I-94 was finished 12 years earlier in 1969. Keep in mind, I-94 literally goes through Detroit, and I-696's eastern terminus is with it. So that really puts into perspective just how absurd the building process of this highway was. There were constant fights from all sides, and it got so bad in the 1960s, then-Governor George Romney locked fighting bureaucrats in a community center until they agreed on a path for the freeway. How I-696 ever got completed is beyond me. Before I end this video, I wanted to go back to our title for the video, America's Autobahn, because I never really talked about why this is. Now, Detroit has enough problems on its own with the crime and the sheer size of the city. There isn't a sufficient police force for the entire thing. So with their attention being needed basically everywhere, drivers on I-696 have been allowed to drive a little too freely for a long time. The highway is notorious for fast drivers, and we have stats to back this up. Because finally, in the summer of 2022, police started to crack down on speeding vehicles. Back in August, officials carried out a speed enforcement detail along I-696 over a four-hour period. In these four hours, officials said that there were 77 traffic stops, 77 citations, 25 verbal warnings, 6 misdemeanor arrests, and 1 vehicle towed. One driver was clocked going 101 miles per hour, while other top speeds included 99, 94, and 91 miles per hour. Another driver was cited for reckless driving when they passed using the shoulder in a construction zone with the suspended license and no insurance. Keep in mind that this is just over the 4 hours they actually kept track of it all. Think of what's been going on for the past 30 years on this highway. There's a lot of sharp turns mixed with a lot of cars. The speed limit's 70, which is slower than a lot of highways in the Detroit area. Basically what I'm saying is that if you're going to go on I-696 for the first time, it's going to be a pretty crazy experience. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Carport, Wolflink71, Snyderswine, Florida Jake, Philip Gertz, Somnam Woods, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, KMS162, Haystack, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf, Jake Holloway, JL, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, and Bryzen. Thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate it. If you want to become a member, the link is in the description below, as well as the join button next to the subscribe button. Basically, all this, mo basically all this money goes straight into my college savings, so if you appreciate the videos a lot and you just want to help me out as a person, that's the best way to do it. Thank you.